when we want to relate independence to ranking it maybe some people might uh, might say that so what about it so how can we relate ranking and independence but from my point of view yes it is important ranking is about uh, to see or to move uh, the university from one uh, state or one one situation to another uh, state so future state for that matter we want to be uh, known uh, wanna be a re globally renowned university so ranking is a very important uh, 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 indicator to help us uh, match and map where we are currently and where we want to be so uh, subsequently we will be looking at uh, next year where uh, are we actually focusing uh, where are we supposed to focus next year and the subsequent year and how do we relate our uh, our budget and our resources in order for us to meet the target so ranking uh, for all of us uh, know ranking has uh, some ranking body university ranking body like qs and also times higher education and also uh, shanghai jiaotong uh, ranking body but for uitm uh, we are actually tagging along tagging along to qs uh, world, rank, uh, world University Ranking, Asia University Ranking, and also uh, Graduate Employability. And uh, when you say when we started all this, uh, well, officially, if I were to say when we when they were started about the uh, link, linking UITM's performance to QS Ranking, we started way back in 2007. 2007 that was that was when uh, the vice chancellor's office take charge of it and i was back then i was uh, an officer in cspi center for strategic planning uh, strategic planning so i was the one in charge and then uh, when i moved to uh, 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 academic and in the international's office back then as a director of quality quality uh, quality yeah? director of quality uh, I was asked to also bring along this uh, initiative so in 2010 uh, we take still take charge on this uh, QS ranking lah. so what we did back then was we submit data we submit data our international ranking data submission uh, not uh, purely every year so we have to do this uh, data five year critical data on the number of students um, international student and uh, a few more about uh, uh, what else uh, we have five indicators <laughs> and then the, of course these five indicators the most important thing is on academic uh, peers and also uh, uh, employability employ, em, employer eh? employers peer, employers data so that was when we started uh, submitting the uh, information from UITM. And then, uh, we, of course, we have established uh, this data submission. Uh, there's a unit handling those. There's a unit in UITM that handles uh, this data submission. As I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier on, it was done by CSPI. Currently, a new info, a new department a rename uh, or rebrand as a transformation, eh? Tra university transformation uh, uh, department. But back then, uh, when I was with uh, Inca, we moved to Inca, so we established this uh, ranking and rating unit under Inca. Uh, that was established in 2015, eh? which later upgraded to the Department of Ranking in 2021. Earlier on, in 2015, uh, the ranking effort has expanded to branch campuses. Uh, now, uh, in 2015, 2015, we were still looking only in Selangor, okay? looking at Selangor perspective. Now, in 2021, we have expanded this thing to cover all campuses. All right? uh, and then, uh, the ranking champ and back then in 2015 because uitm is so huge so we got to have this uh, people moving it 
Yeah, and 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 when uh, back then we have what we call ranking champion. We appoint each uh, faculty one uh, person who who handles this ranking champion. Because earlier on, I, I did mention about three uh, world uh, world university ranking. Uh, Asia University ranking, employability ranking, and we, and QSS has another one, which is subject ranking, world subject ranking. Because this subject ranking actually looking at uh, uh, field, so there currently there are 48 fields are being ranked throughout the world, and since 2016 we have already uh, started submitting data on that. And each faculty, uh, because of that, we need to have one uh, more of like a liaison officer so that to help this ranking department to prepare those data accordingly, so, so by subject. So we have one like chemical engineering, uh, we have uh, mechanical engineering, we have uh, computer science and, and uh, non, non uh, science and technology uh, and so on and so forth. Oh, okay, so this, uh, that's where uh, this ranking champion plays a role, uh, so they clean up the data. And from that point of view, because uh, remember we have to submit data, we, our intention is to submit data for the world university ranking, but because of uh, this subject ranking and we have our ranking champion, what they do is actually what they did back then was to submit data according to their uh, faculty and also field. Then those whatever they do was actually being translated and, and uh, aggregated to uh, then our world university ranking and also Asia university ranking. That's what we do. The strategy was uh, pushed down to uh, faculty and then the result then will be accumulated right up to uh, uh, world, uh, the Asia, uh, Asia University Ranking and also World Minister Ranking. But take note, our objective then and also future, we are looking at um, not just peer uh, academic and academic peers and also uh, this reputation and data, <coughs> but at the same time, we are also looking at three other important uh, indicators, which are uh, citation and publication. So, and, and another one is employability. Employability. That's why we need the ranking champion to sort of assist the deans and uh, and the head of department how to mobilize our strategy to improve on this publication and also citation. And and of and also getting uh, people or getting uh, people who knows us uh, right there out there uh, from this academic peers uh, academic reputation. So from QS point of view for academic reputation, we are required to submit four hundred different names every year. So that's also the function of a uh, ranking champion from. Uh, faculty of each faculty and uh, head of department so they have to come up with this four fresh names every year so uh, that's also another reason why uh, we need those uh, liaison officer back uh, at the faculty so they are the one who knows who uh, who do who uh, do, who they are actually uh, networking with networked with for that particular year so they will submit those names and also uh, emails to our ranking department uh, and then of course we will channel those names to uh, QS that okay for that matter that's a, that's a difference between that's one different between difference between QS ranking and times higher ranking for times higher ranking the reputation is measured differently uh, they are focusing more on research and publication they look they actually they uh, QS rank, uh, sorry, Times Higher Ranking are the one contacting the author. Eh? They contacted the author uh, from uh, all universities and also the co-authors. Then the questions whether they know uh, who are the uh, relevant uh, universities uh, from from those names as compared to when we do it for QS. QS required each and every university to submit uh, names that we uh, that know us and then we bring it up uh, we submit to them and they will send to all these names uh, 
a survey but bear in mind QS wouldn't allow uh, those names that we submitted to respond to our university. In our GRU, eh, I put in short form, GRU 2025, globally renowned university, uh, uh, university or UITM has already put uh, ranking uh, indicators as as, as, an, as as a proper indicator for us to indicate to us that we have achieved some uh, somewhere. Eh? So in that sense, for QS World University Ranking, we, we set a target to be top uh, 300. Okay, top 300. So if we can push that even uh, better, we'll be top 100. Uh, right? So maybe we need to go for top 100. <laughs> but the how-to definitely is a tough uh, question and a tough uh, strategy. And, and, and to make it happen, somehow uh, we need uh, all every everyone to come on board in that sense so we cannot just rely on one person i don't believe in moving things only by one person or just by one office uh, it everybody must come on board as i mentioned earlier so the strategy the first thing is to make sure uh, everybody uh, aware of where do, we, where do we want to go? So we are quite lucky because now I think with that uh, document, GRU 2025, it is clearly stated in that uh, triangle so that we are going for that top 100 and also 20 subject to be ranked and two subject to be top 100. So that's very clear and I, I mentioned earlier we want everybody in UITM, especially to staff, mem staff, academic staff, to go into this website, QS website, to look into and study what are the indicators and discuss those. So if we talk about uh, publication. So it is not about uh, one uh, vice chancellor to ask you to write, or it's not about just one uh, deputy vice chancellor to drive you to uh, make sure you write. It is the whole university. If we want to go for this world uh, globally renowned university, we need to publish. That's the that's the basic idea of publication. Publication. Eh? So we need to publish, and if possible, if all our staff can publish in Q1 journal. If it is not Q1 journal now, it could be any. Uh, I mean, basic simple Scopus channel and then we got to plan. Each and every one of us must plan where we want to be in next six months or in next one year. Or perhaps, of course, we can push right up to 2025. That's how I look at it. Uh, so uh, in a way, everybody got to identify their own strength. So we have, uh, in Selangor, we have 3,500 uh, staff, uh, academic staff. Uh, or faculty, uh, we call it, right? Faculty members. So each, if each and every one of us can sort of identify where they are and where they want to be in terms of publication, or where they want, to, where they are in terms of bringing in names, uh, like what I mentioned earlier on this academic reputation, uh, and where, how, what they want to be in, in next two, two, in next six months, perhaps bringing in two names. If each and every one. Of, of us brings two in international student, uh, international names that I think will be good enough, all right. And coming back to this publication, uh, I hope not. I mean, all our academic staff will not or will not trying will not try to sort of look into the fact that oh, because we are now eighteen hours, so we cannot be writing. That's not a right. That's not a good excuse. The way I look at it, uh, if it is 18 hours, or even now we, we have 16 hours, how many hours do we have a day, right? If we, uh, uh, in Malay, we say, nak seri budaya, tak nak seri budali. So if we have this 16 hours a week to teach, if you are already teaching one particular course for the past 10 years, do you think you need all these 18 hours to handle it? I don't think so. We can sort of uh, do uh, and teach effectively, efficiently. And what about the rest of the hours that we, are, uh, we have available? That's where we want these people to write. So if they can contribute simple writing first, 
Uh, and then uh, as they move along, in three years down the road, hopefully we can get this. Many, uh, many uh, Q1 journals, many uh, Scopus journals, Scopus articles to be uh, published. When we do all those activities I mentioned earlier, the impact will be, number one, to the individual itself. Okay? Of course, then to the department and then the whole university. It's, uh, it's always like uh, people will ask, if I were to do this, what's in it for me? So this kind of impact must again be translated in terms of uh, uh, thinking. So if we can have a discussion, open discussion, then perhaps they will see uh, what's, what, what's in it for them. So when we talk about impact, it is more of what's in it for them. And of course, from university point of view, we have done impact study. That is the official part of uh, the impact of the university itself. So we have done this. But your question earlier, I will talk about that impact uh, organization, but I will touch on this uh, impact of this ranking first. So when, when each and every one of us, the, even the students should also see. So if we get, if we get top 100, so, so what? People might want to say that, but of course, uh, if we got top 100 or top 300, we are, our image and our, our university's reputation will be comparable to other universities of that, uh, 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 that uh, brand, uh, that name, eh? that, that uh, level. So that will be good in terms of, that will be translated to motivation. So we want people within the university to mot be motivated to work hard so and work smart. So then people, if I just say work hard, then we, people will say we should be working smart now. Yes, I agree. I agree with all this technology, we are working smart. Right? We are working smart because we can, pub we can, be, we can produce more with less. That's my intention, that's my ideas, that hopefully all of us will not find an excuse of not producing, right? It, at all level. So I mentioned about uh, publication. Of course, the rest of the team in the, within the university will also uh, work and assist in terms of, uh, so once we already have this publication, once we have all these grants, who is going to promote those? And we have few teams who can do that. Our website, our, our social media will have to come on board and play a role. That's part of this impact. So even, even for personal impact, of course, immediately is your, your, your uh, I mean, staff, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you can come, you can become, you can get your professorship, you can get your associate professorship, and so on and so forth. So that's basically for personal uh, impact if people ask you, so what, why do we need to do this uh, ranking? Uh, people all, all think that it is only benefiting the university. But trust me, if, they, if you come on board, because these are all the indicators that a, uh, an academic staff must do if, if, they, want, if they want to uh, transfer to universities in, uh, in, in India or in, in US or in United, in United Kingdom. These are the same things that they have to do. They have to produce uh, papers, they got to teach, uh, right? They got to uh, do research. So it's the same indicators. It's not so much about ranking. But for that, rank, for that matter, ranking from my point of view, from my point of view, uh, uh, what are the what are the impact? It's more of a reputation for the university, but where the question you mentioned about impact study, yes, for UITM we have done two 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 times impact study. One is in two thousand uh, seven, eh? so we have done uh, one impact study, more of a social uh, social impact social impact. Uh, you must know why UITM uh, exists. UITM is here because we want. Uh, we want. Uh, we are. It's actually a one a platform where we create opportun second opportunity for uh, our Bumiputra to go for their uh, third uh, tertiary education. So with that, with that, uh, we we want to measure. We wanted to measure. So do we achieve those those? Uh, uh, objective, those mission. 
Uh, so there was a study back in 2007, and we proved that, yes, we have done uh, quite significantly in terms of, uh, if I can recall, back in 1956 when UITM, uh, when ITM started its, uh, uh, when we were established as Latihan Rida, there's only two programs being offered, two programs being offered. So only uh, how many students, less than 15 students in that particular program. And it was, uh, uh, the program was very simplistic, more of a uh, 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 making, uh, it's a, it's a uh, track making. Eh? So back then uh, was that kind of, uh, our state, current, our state back then. But now we are offering more than 550 programs. So you just imagine, uh, the impact. Yeah? In 2007, uh, we realized we need to study those and document it. So we have uh, documented that and we have whatever amount or one dollar, uh, one dollar, one ringgit, sorry, one ringgit uh, that the government spent, we have calculated that the primary economic impact that we have created is about four ringgit. Yeah, four ringgit uh, back in 2007. So every one dollar that the government spent for UITM, we created four ringgit for the economic uh, situation, uh, economic, uh, economic, uh, economic uh, around the uh, around the five kilometer radius within one campus. So that uh, research was done in 2007. That include all campuses. And come 2020, in 1999 for that matter, uh, 2020, 2019 for that matter, we have conducted another impact study. But this time around the impact study, we use technology. So what we did is we use uh, NASA images and we want to trace what was the changes from 1999, that was when UITM became uh, ITM became university so we trace the the image satellite image from of course from our GIS team and around all our campuses so 5 kilometer radius and also 10 kilometer radius so what we found in that 20 years in 1999 2019 2009 and 2019 we have uh, what we found is that the development uh, surrounding the campuses has been tremendously uh, very significant and I would say 20 percent 20 percent change uh, in terms of land use in terms of activities and that's uh, what uh, we had impacted on the economy economic uh, situation out there. So UITM has played a role. We have proven that UITM uh, has, has achieved its objective and its mission. And to move forward, I think this GRU 2025 uh, very significant and everybody got to come on board and prove to ourselves, not proving to the rest of the world. We need to prove it to ourselves so that uh, we have achieved our objective. Now we got to move higher. So we want to be at par with other organization, other universities throughout the world. So we now we need to establish partners from international and telling people that we want to work with them, we want to be with them, we want to share with them what uh, our knowledge. We want them to also uh, uh, work with us, co-create the future together. Uh, I think that should be our objective.